All right, well, welcome everyone. Thanks for, thanks for coming. I'm Mark Johnson. I'm a solutions architect uh, over at Axion, a local consulting software shop. Um, so today, uh, I, I kind of switched the title on you, I think, a little bit. It's still going, we're going to be talking about using DSC and Otter and Git and Chocolatey, but actually I wanted to emphasize kind of this newer feature uh, that they have, that uh, Otter has, which is this pipeline concept. Not to be confused with the pipelines in um, Buildmaster, but it's a, kind of a similar concept. Um, so anyway, um, oh, we're not getting focus here. There we go. Uh, so welcome to Portland. Anyone who's not, uh, who's, who's not from Portland? Oh, welcome. Yeah. Good to have you. Um, so I'm sure you got met the welcoming committee. Uh, so, or maybe it was a different welcoming committee. I don't know. Um, but anyway, we're here to talk about Otter and uh, kind of how that interplays with PowerShell and Git. Um, kind of, um, I think this is kind of like going down like the Git flow, um, or not Git flow, more like Git ops, where it's less artifact centric and more git centric to move things through environments. Um, but there's our guy who's trying to get some work done. And uh, so, you know, how can we reliably manage software in all of our environments? Um, so the challenge is uh, if, let's say I have one environment, it's production, everything's production, and I'm just doing changes in production and, uh, you know, changing, installing new software, new versions of software, maybe it's um, I'm managing developer build systems, um, that type of thing, and I change the version of NPM or something like that. And how do I know it's not going to break? Um, so this is kind of going down that route of how do we do that. So perhaps Otter could um, assist with that. Oh, sorry, let me get rid of this phone here. It's going to be annoying. Uh, okay. So this is kind of an overview of what we'll talk about. So we'll talk about um, setup, uh, setting Otter up, uh, provisioning, uh, kind of setting up the roles, and then managing, just changing configuration, uh, and then uh, talking about uh, promotion, how we promote through the different environments, and then how we uh, perform remediation when drift is detected. Uh, so let's talk about the setup. So initial Otter setup, it's you know same as a lot of the all the other Anito products is using the Anito Hub, which is kind of a, that's kind of come into favor with the in installation process. Um, we need to set up our source control integration, so we'll be using GitHub today, but you can also use GitLab or um, TFS or you know uh, Azure DevOps as well. Um, installing Otter agents, uh, it's optional. You can use WS Man, a perfectly viable option as well. And then also creating those uh, objects in Otter. We're not going to do all those um, steps today. We're just kind of going over, hey, this is kind of that general process. Um, so for our source control integration, we're going to basically create a new Git repo GitHub repository um, with one branch to represent each environment. So if we have four <coughs> environments, let's say you have development, um, testing, uh, staging, and production. However many environments you have, I know like you know it's a lot of times with um, um, you know infrastructure as code, maybe you don't have as many environments. Maybe it's just dev and production. Whatever it is, you just match your number of branches to the number of uh, of, of environments, and also matching the names. So here I have dev. Now I didn't match the name on master. I left master as like that's like production. I'm I'm treating it just to um, kind of I don't know. Master is always in Git repo, so I just left it. But you could call master prod, I guess, if you wanted to. Uh, and then, so this is kind of a, a new feature. I don't know if anybody, has anybody seen the pipeline feature in Otter yet? Um, it's probably kind of tiny, but um, what you have is, so there's this concept called rafts, and a raft is just a mechanism to deliver content. Um, in the, uh, uh, by default, the, the default raft is just a database, so it stores all the content in the database. That's scripts, modules, roles, um, that type of thing. Um, I prefer the Git 
rafts myself just because you every time anytime you make a change it's committing those changes up so here we've got this interesting looking raft and this is a, a pipeline raft and then these are pipeline only rafts they only work with in conjunction with this so you can see that this basically maps branches to raft names so it says dev is dev raft and test is test raft etc prod prod raft um, and so what this will do is depending on what your server what server is assigned to what environment it will pull the configuration from the appropriate branch uh, so this really streamlines the process because now I can just if I make my default uh, dev so I'm always just generally working in dev you know do, just ha having galore fun in dev um, uh, I, you know, breaking stuff, but then once I'm ready, once that's, that's refined, I can then move that up to, uh, up to test uh, for the next stage. Um, yeah, creating a raft, and here's the, so we're going to restrict to pipeline rafts. That's going to um, restrict this only for use in the pipeline mode. Um, and we're saying which branch and which environment, and this checkbox, that's a new, new checkbox there. Okay, so installing agents, this is probably familiar to everybody with, build. it's the same Anito agent uh, for build master. Uh, but you could also use PowerShell remoting. I, I do that in certain cases too. Um, I guess I find that the agent is, um, has a, just like, it seems like it has a little bit better um, uh, throughput on data rates and that type of thing. It feels a little more responsive, but you know, it's all subjective, I guess, a little bit, but maybe there's some real numbers there. Um, so yeah, installing Otter agent, real simple, that's like a, 10 second operation. Um, then, then we're gonna, you know, as we're creating those, installing those agents, we're going to uh, create the corresponding Otter server objects. So you can see here, I just created representations for each environment. So we have a uh, dev VM, prod VM, and a testing VM. Uh, you know, this is just showing the states. Uh, this one's drifted um, because auto remediation isn't turned on. We can talk about that later. Uh, these ones are current, um, and this shows the roles that are assigned. So it's a package consumer. Uh, creating servers, we talked about that, assigning to the environment. Uh, we're assigning the roles down here. So, um, and up here I said, uh, so yeah, the roles are implicitly executed um, the, based on the, the dependencies. So this one only has one role, but it actually depends as a chain of dependencies, like five different roles. Because um, what you'll find is that um, if you don't have those dependencies in place, uh, you, um, let's say you're trying to use some particular operation just to even detect if something's there, it's going to crash. It's going to say, I can't even do this because I need to have it installed. This allows you to kind of uh, ramp, you know, progressively bootstrap your system with the, the command so you can, don't have to get a lot of red errors all the time. Um, so. Let's move on to provisioning. So, um, yeah, basically we're gonna do a one-time setup. And this is basically the bootstrapping is, this is um, things that, I, you know, things like getting chocolate installed, getting NuGet package, manage, uh, NuGet package management installed, um, maybe some other DSC PowerShell modules that will help us uh, accomplish different types of configuration. Um, so, I mean, really what this is doing is preparing us to do like real work. Um, but this, so some of these bootstrap operations are more PowerShell-y. It's, it's um, they're like, hey, let's, if I start from a clean system, how do I get to a point where I can now start like really um, delivering value? Um, so yeah, obviously getting it working on dev servers first is the goal. Uh, this is, yeah, uh, just emphasizing the role dependencies, depending on chaining those dependencies. Um, we want to configure PowerShell and, uh, you know, we want to make sure that WinRM is set up, uh, bootstrapping PowerShell modules, the, some DSC modules for doing additional configuration. Um, and this is just a sample uh, Otter script of, you know, how, of installing some of these uh, um, PowerShell packages, so we're doing like DSC resources, package management provider resource, package management, and here we're just using like raw PowerShell to install those modules off of the PS gallery. 
Um, but this is just kind of that bootstrapping thing. And like here, it's setting up this max envelope size just so that when you're doing any PowerShell activities, sometimes you'll hit these things like envelope size exceeded when there's a bunch of data. So this just kind of handles that. Um, Package management configuration. So um, yeah, here we want to set up our custom URL. So if we're using ProGet internally, um, you know, set up custom PowerShell, uh, Chocolatey, NuGet, NPM uh, um, URLs, which is, I know it's always fun, like NPM especially is fun to apply that system wide, but um, that's where you do it. Um, yeah, and then additional Chocolatey uh, DSC. Uh, so I'm, I've been using Chocolatey um, DSC resources just because I've been using them for a while and they're, they're effective in like bootstrapping Chocolatey on the system and getting, um, uh, uh, you know, other, and getting Chocolatey packages installed. And uh, then we'll install the Chocolatey client using the PowerShell DSC module. Okay, so bootstrap production server. Now, unfortunately, um, Azure connectivity is, is down for me. I have, uh, there's some port issue with the, both the wired and the Wi-Fi, but um, I believe I have a, 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 can circumvent that. Um, so I do have a local VM, fortunately. Um, so let's just start top level. So this is the Otter interface. This gives us a preview of like the status of our uh, servers, the roles, and the environments. So this is just saying, hey, there's two, um, there's two servers that are current and two that are drifted. And so let's go ahead and take a look at our servers. Now you see some red in here. So the, both the prod and the test VM are Azure servers. Um, the, uh, let's go ahead and um, take a look at this dev VM. So let's look at the configuration. So this is what's currently been provisioned to the system. Uh, we've got some just general packages, like anything general would be any like PS, any PowerShell scripts that were just invoked. Um, and we've got some DSC packages, chocolatey packages, etc. And it also collects kind of just system wide uh, DSC modules that are, have been installed. Um, and then, uh, so let's go ahead and Take a look at the role. So this is right now. This is using this chocolatey packages build role. So let's take a look at that one. I'm gonna open that new tab. So let's look at the edit that version. So you can see um, here we have a, a list of some PowerShell modules, um, uh, or sorry, chocolatey modules or packages. Um, that we're installing, that are already installed. So these are already there. Um, and let's go ahead and throw in um, another one. Let's throw in, some of these are kind of um, painful to install. Let's do git install. I think that one's okay. I don't want it to take like minutes. So we'll save that. And so by default, it takes a little time because it's, actu it's actually pushing that commit up to uh, GitHub. And so let's go back to our server. And we'll run this check configuration. And right now we are set to automatically remediate. So it will just um, automatically, it should identify that and install that package. Um, so here we're, yeah, we're, it's saying, hey, I've already got module chocolatey installed. Um, is this, is this screen familiar? Have, have people seen this one? Mark, you have, yeah. Um, so this is just like a straight output dump of like exactly what's happening, a real time kind of thing. There's a, you can also switch to the detail view, which just kind of um, categorizes things based on their role execution. Um, generally, I, I kind of stick in here, um, but the other view can be helpful too. Okay, so git install, so that is going to ensure that. So let's, so that took uh, four seconds. That wasn't too bad. 
just ensuring that notepad plus plus, the vim, and okay, so now it's going to do the git because it didn't think it was installed. And dun, 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 dun. there we go. So that finished. So let's go back to the. So now we can see we have 13 items in the configuration, and now we have the uh, git package um, being installed. Um, so if we go up to GitHub, this one. So if we switch to branch master, uh, we can see that um, for that role, uh, that package is build. So you can see that um, automatically committed that up. Um, and so now if we want to propagate that, we can go ahead and do a, uh, do a pull request. This is just kind of how I've been doing it, just going pull requests to the different environments. Um, so we just say, okay, new pull request, we're gonna go from dev to um, test. I'm gonna follow the flow, even though test is down because that Azure machine is down, but this is a pretty quick um, process, so we're gonna Merge that, as you can see, the files is going to detect that single change. So the nice thing about this is that it gives audit auditability um, across your process as you're moving and changing things. You can have now you can have a review process in Git. So it's kind of you know um, it's more like real development um, in some ways um, as opposed to like just changing things and not having that review process. Um, so it's uh, it's kind of kind of nice that way. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, merge that. So that is merged. And I'm going to go. I'm just going to do another pull pull request real quick to the uh, to go from test to stage. Stage is the local VM I have. Uh, so new pull request from test to stage. Create that. Okay, again, just one file change, probably the same amount of content, yep. So now we're moving that to the next environment, confirm that. And so that's, now if we go, now let's go ahead and we'll come back to that because I, I, that's going to take a little bit longer to do, so let's proceed on the slides here. So that's the demo, bootstrapping. So now we have the, the bootstrap dev server. I kind of uh, pre-provision pre that one just to save time because we will we'll fully provision the staging once we um, enable auto-remediation on that, which will take a, a couple minutes. Um, okay, manage configurations. Uh, so here we're gonna configure what packages to install, uh, what PowerShell uh, modules and DSC resources, and environment-specific settings. Um, so some modules are installed by the uh, Bootstrap DSC Resources Otter module, um, and we talked about those, the chocolatey modules. Um, you'd also, I, I'm not uh, demonstrating this, but this, you know, here, you know, during this phase is where, you know, you're going to be setting environment variables, granting, denying rights, setting registry keys, et cetera. The upside is now we're tracking that all through, um, through GitHub and using pull requests. Um, okay, so kind of already did this, basically install a new, new chocolatey package dev so we kind of, we can short circuit this demo. Um, promotion, okay, so we want to move configuration changes from lower environments to higher, uh, higher environments, so going from dev to test to stage to production. Um, as you just saw, it was a you know, pull request uh, from dev to test and then we're going to do the, the pull request, have someone review the changes, commit the merge, and then Otter will pull uh, the prod branch, or in this case, we're gonna do the staging branch. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at that. So we're gonna go from dev to stage. Um, so now, in our server, staging is in a drifted state. Now if we look at this, the configuration, uh, there's basically just one thing. Because the way that the dependency chaining works, 
is that it's um, it's not gonna it's not gonna move past something that um, it's not gonna move to the next roll until the first roll is satisfied until that one is actually remediated. Um, so what we'll do is just uh, turn on automatic remediation. Automatically remediate. Okay, so now this one, take a little bit more time. This is gonna. This is uh, starting from like a, a a scratch server. So this is just a VM I uh, restored the snapshot on. Um, so it doesn't have chocolatey. It doesn't have any of the NuGet um, package stuff configured. Uh, doesn't have any DSC modules installed. So this will get get us to a point where we can now start just installing packages and using PowerShell to our heart's content. And here, so here it's just. Um, detecting and installing packages, again, chocolatey. And yep, and then there's the module C Choco. I use both C Choco and chocolatey because they kind of have different uh, strengths and weaknesses. <laughs> um, but, and those are DSC modules. Um, but uh, Otter does really well integrating with the, the DSC content uh, that's on uh, PS Gallery. So there's a ton of uh, great DSC modules to really expand the library effectively. Okay, so it's, now it's getting a uh, notepad. It's ensuring that. Git, git could, that one could take a little longer. And yeah, while it's doing that, let's, um, let's go back and take a look here. Okay. And then we're kind of already addressing the remediation. We're looking at like what a server looks like when it's um, uh, in a remediate uh, drifted state and how to remediate that. Um, so drift occurs when the actual state differs from the expected state. So if I say I expect this value to be 100 um, and it's you know 50, then it that's, that's considered a drift. By default, all the servers are in a, just a report only mode. So this detect the drift, uh, but they won't um, uh, they won't auto remediate, so that's kind of the next level where you kind of want to get to. You want to get to that. Uh, hey, everything's being auto remediated, uh, and I think with this type of, of pipeline system, I think there's a lot more comfort there that the things that actually make it to production are going to be well vetted and uh, um, you know have the reviews, have the um, the testing done. Uh, I, I would imagine if you're doing like a build system, you would. Uh, you know, test out your your uh, some canary builds before saying, "Hey, this is in a in a good state." So yeah, the other way to remediate is so if you just have a, re a report only server, uh, you could um, uh, basically run a, a manual job, and so that's um, I can show you that. So that's done. So that so now the staging VM should be green. So that one's current. And if we look at its configuration, it now has 13. It has that um, git install we added in the uh, dev environment. That is so that is now effectively in the staging environment. And it has pretty it, it matches the exact configuration of our dev system. Um, and then for the remediation, if we uh, turn this back to a, turn it back to report only. And we'll go to, so we'll go back over to assets. And so now in the assets, which I didn't really talk about, you see these dev, test, stage, and prods. Those are the different branches. Um, 
And, and so what I can do is I can go to my uh, modules. Actually, I, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I want to go to the, I have my package, I'm going to change a package. So let's go to the roles. But the roles has a similar thing. So in this, down below, you can see these different dev, test, stage, and prod, um, which map to the, uh, the branches. So we want to edit this one. So now, let's go ahead and add PowerShell core internal. Let's see what happens there. Now obviously, this is kind of, um, you probably wouldn't want to do this, like we're skipping an environment, but uh, just for uh, demonstration purposes, to show the drift. And do that. So now if this, this would be maybe a scenario of like a hot fix. So let's say you're in production, hey, the whole, everything's shot. Uh, so then you do your change directly in production to get moving. And then what you, you would do is do the pull request backwards. So you just do the pull request master to stage, to test, to dev, and now you've kind of completed that hot fix cycle. So, okay, let's go back to the servers. Let's run a, so that, it's already detected drift. Um, and so that just, that kind of uh, demonstrates how that when things are in a drifted state and when you go to the configuration tab, now it's going, oh, actually I don't know why, oh, it's in the middle of a execution, that's why. That is why. So as it's going through, it's, it first detects and then it's going to uh, remediate. And, uh, and it, I think that this execution fired off before I had done the change. So I think that concept is clear anyway, so I'm not gonna spend too much time on that. Automatic remediation, we kind of already covered that. Um, so that's kind of the gist. That's the gist of the, the pipeline process. Um, I think this feature is, it, I think it's clear enough, simple enough um, to um, really uh, kind of up level that the configuration process um, to make it a little, little clearer. Um, but that's, that's the, uh, the talk, any questions today? Hmm? How do you scale that? Like in a, in a large enterprise environment? How do you scale? Because it, it looks like you're still coming in, you're making individual server objects here. And, and that, that's fine and well and good when you've only got one, five, ten servers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you hit the point of having several hundred yeah. of them that you want to deal with, sure. you don't really want to come in and sure. you, by hand you've got, you, promote everyone by hand. Promote every, well, you wouldn't promote every one. You would promote a single branch, right? So a single branch could apply to 100 servers. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so like I have a dev branch that could apply to 50 dev servers. Uh, my test could be like 10 test servers. Uh, so yeah, that's, those are the, uh, the number, it's not a one-to-one -one relation. It's only for demonstration purposes. I just have okay. one dev server, one, yes, but. I'm also not familiar with our. Agree, so I'm, I, I, no, so yeah, that's a great question. Yeah, so that's, um, uh, yeah, that you could. The scale should not be a problem. Um, it should be able to handle. Uh, and and if, it, if you're talking about like like creating the server objects in the in the otter itself, I mean, I think there's um, several automation options where you could, you know, if you're using an Active Directory or you have some directory of computer systems, you could pull the names. You could do, you know, you could do PowerShell remoting. So that would give you. Um, you could also install the agent um, automatically if you have some like SSH. Convention or something, you know, I don't know if you're in a Linux environment or your Windows. Okay, so I mean, yeah, basically, you know, if your systems are already have PowerShell remoting, that's an advantage because <laughs> then you can you could install the agents or you could just set all your agents in Otter up as just WS man connections. Um, but uh, yeah, there's there's several options for for automating that in installation kind of configuration part. Um, mm -hmm. Can you use Otter to install the Otter, the Otter agent? Yes. Right. Yes. So yeah. You can switch, you can install Otter server and then tell it to install the Otter agent and switch its connection from the web Yes. Server. Yeah, because the, the API, the, the web API for agents is available, so you, or servers, so you can basically, we just did this with, um, with a, a client, basically install Otter agent, get the AES key, then you can like basically uh, call the um, Otter API endpoint, create that object with the AES key. You're, I'm asking, is that built into Otter? 
Is it built into Otter? No, no. Yeah, I think I've been, I, I, yeah, that'd be interesting. So like, how would you see that working? I'm just kind of more curious, like if. Uh, so I would see it working as you somehow add server to Otter some functionality somewhere and you would check it and, and install the new agent. So like. And, and it goes out and uses WinRM to install the agent somehow. I like it. And then connects back to yeah. Otter. And yeah. the key for you, so you don't have to worry about. Yeah. Yeah, we have, we have automation in place that we use Chef to install any new agents on all our servers. Ah, yeah, I, mean, I think that's a good idea. I think that would be so a great. Kind of just did it for you. Yeah, I think that would be a great. Especially to sort of support the winner. Right? Yeah, I think that would be a great candidate for like an extension to, to add on there. I don't think it's, I mean, I think the pattern is, cl is clear enough that it's just implementing it. Yeah, uh, I, 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 I want to move to a. Uh, thing where we can spin up servers, dynamic servers dynamically. Yeah. And having to bootstrap, bootstrap, right? And nobody wants to do that. It'd be nice if I just could say, yeah. I had a server, then within like three minutes, it was yeah. configured with an agent. Definitely. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, and technically, if you already have, if you already have PowerShell remoting enabled, you don't even need to install the agent. You can just use PowerShell remoting. I prefer to use the agent. Oh, okay. That's fair. PowerShell remoting. I, no, I hear you. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, but that, that's a, I, I've, I've, that's been one like since Otter's inception. I'm like, how do I automatically do this? And so, it's been on the backlog. So like, it's a, I think that's a good, um, you know, hearing that is a good uh, motivation to like talk more about that. Yeah. So, um, any other, any other questions or comments? When this, I like that it's committed to get that sort of tool. Can you configure? To, to make commits as the current user, and you know who's making the commit? Yes, so uh, you probably saw that it's like, it's, it's like Otter Express user. Yeah, I saw uh, that. So it would, if you, if I had a, like a, a, like a actual license and there was users, then it would actually put the user information in that commit. Okay. Yeah. Um, are you able to test your deployments to your, uh, like all plans in Otter? Did you do any kind of testing around them before you could make, even get promoted to say dev? Uh, yes, you could do testing. Now, I mean, obviously, a test would be something like, um, you know, uh, run run this configuration, and then you'd have some other test configuration, like a role perhaps, that is like dependent on those other roles, so it implicitly runs last, and then it would just do some. I mean, it's really just like validating that the things happened, right? That's kind of. Um, so there's no like there's no like automatic testing, but uh, but you could certainly implement to, to like hey if it doesn't match throw an throw an error and then like your the server's red, uh, and then you can come back and correct it. That's a great idea though. I'm big on testing. What? I'm big on testing. It's, it's the one thing that I wish Buildmaster had was a, we use primarily Buildmaster not Otter, but I'd like the place where I could somehow test my stuff before I actually roll it out. Yes. Uh, Rather than just throwing it and actually doing a deployment somewhere, it's like, uh, I don't Oh, know. well, I mean, I, 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 think, I, mean, I think that's, I mean, that is kind of the idea behind having the multiple environments that, like, your dev is like, you know, that should be somewhat of like, just throw, it, throw dirt at it. Um, uh, but, but you can only get into subtle situations where dev, the previous configuration of dev interferes. You think it's okay, but then when you spin up a new server, there's some weird, Dependency you didn't catch. Yeah, I, I agree. Nice, it would be nice to test it on a fresh VM somehow. So, so when, you, when you're saying testing, you're thinking of like an, an integrated experience where it's like spin up a VM, yeah. run the configuration, destroy the VM kind of thing. Hmm. That's interesting. Buildmaster, I'd like it for Buildmaster too, as some place where I can play around with stuff. Yeah. And then, but, and then probably with the actual being used. Yeah, that is interesting. Yeah, that that would be that would be one that would be, I think, somewhat somewhat challenging to maybe put into words or to formalize. But I think if you could, it, it could be very valuable. Because yeah. Chef has like test kitchen and stuff like that, but it's terribly slow on Windows. Oh really? Yeah. Okay. 
Is 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 that? Yeah. <laughs> what about what about what about just like snapshots though? Would that be more? It's still, it's still sort of what Chef Kitchen does is actually uh, it does snapshots, but it makes a copy of your VM locally. Oh. Yeah. Copy, so. Yeah. 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 That would be slow. There might be ways to optimize it. I don't use it often enough to know. That's a, yeah, that's interesting. Well, cool. Any uh, any other questions, comments? Cons sure. Yeah, keep them coming. Yeah. Um, as far as my last one, so as far as committing to source, is it all of Autogets committed to the same repo, or can you divvy it up somehow? You can divvy it up. You could go to different repos. Um, I'm I'm just using branches because that makes like the pull request. Um, flow very easy, um, but yeah, you could certainly go to like multi repo like this, um, like dev is this is over in GitLab and <laughs> you know like you go. Right. You can let you do like role based like this role is in this repo, this role is in this repo, or is it basically by environment? You, have to... you can um, yeah. So let me show you that actually. So in roles, so like on these, the Basically, it's just, I mean, it's based just on, on the server. So whatever the server is associated with, whatever environment. So like in this case, like we have a role that's applying to two different VMs in two different environments, which is technically two different um, repos, but they're this, just different branches. Um, so I'm just trying to drill down exact kind of more where you're shooting towards. Well, I just, I know right now we have the way we have our chef cookbooks organized. It's kind of our role, like, this is a file server. This is an app server. Server, yeah. Right? And they're all in different repos. And I know there's there going to be some level of cookbooks that operations doesn't want anybody to touch, but there's some cookbooks Got that it. They, they're going to let people touch. And so I'm wondering if there's a way to mimic that somehow. Let me think about that. Let me get back to you on that one. I, I think there may be some creative solution there, but I haven't <laughs> thought about that. I'm all for creative solutions. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I think there's lots of, you know, in your, obviously you have a very, a, it sounds like a pretty complex um, environment, so like I think you'll be pushing the boundaries uh, on I things. I like a more complex environment. Right now it's all static. Oh. <laughs> I like to move, so I'm looking for people to move, so I can introduce that complexity. Got it, got it. Well, I mean, definitely, um, so, so yeah, let me think about, so the roles, uh, like doing a role, the role content itself, well, I mean, what I can say is like, the, the, like in this case, the role content is stored in two different, so it's, I mean, um, but you're saying like the roles are exclusive, like this role is always in this environment. It's not uh, spread across the branches. Like, let me, th okay, okay. I'm just wondering how, how, you, how granular you make the source control integration. Like what is it? Store, it like let me let me uh, let me go to the source control area here. Let's just pop that up. So we're basically we're at, we're in the rafts. Um, so the rafts we have this raft which just allows us to map um, branches to rafts. It just so whenever we use the default when I, and I'm I have a, I'm in the dev environment. I'm going to use the dev raft. So this is basically how that mapping works. Uh, these rafts have individual configuration for the different repositories. Um, and you're saying, hey, I'm for this environment. Or I'm not restricted to an environment. Um, so raft is the unit. Raft is the unit, yes, yeah. Which is exactly what Mark said. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Anything else? All right. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Appreciate it.